Imagine the worst stories you've heard about El Chapo, the notorious drug lord. Now picture someone even more ruthless and dangerous. That's Nemesio El Mencho Oseguera Cervantes. Leading the feared CJNG cartel, El Mencho's reign of terror has taken violence and fear to a new level. In this journey, we'll uncover why El Mencho is considered worse than El Chapo, giving you a glimpse into the harsh reality of Mexico's drug war. Brutality Popularly known as the CJNG cartel, the Jalisco cartel new generation is highly revered as one of the most feared criminal gangs within and beyond the borders of Mexico. From brutal killings of rival gang members to the merciless execution of disloyal members and frequent gun battles with law enforcement agencies, the group has become the face of barbarism in Mexico's criminal underworld. These brazen acts of gross violence and extreme rascality are driven by the fierce disposition of its founder and leader, El Mencho. Under the guidance of El Mencho, the CJNG cartel has been become a full-blown terror group that cannot be tamed. Today, the gang is responsible for the exponential increase in cases of extortions, kidnappings, forced disappearance, and homicides in its stronghold of Jalisco and other parts of Mexico. Through despicable acts of violence and devious tactics, El Mencho's CJNG has changed the landscape of the Mexican drug trafficking industry, and it is no surprise that the gang is now used as a yardstick for measuring the changing dynamics of the activities of transnational criminal organizations TCO, in the South American country. Country. Aside from the regular act of drug trafficking, the El Mencho-led CJNG cartel engages in all sorts of propaganda and employs quasi-military tactics to intimidate residents and members of rival cartels. Some of the first victims of CJNG's wild brutality were members of another drug cartel known as Los Zetas. Announcing its grand arrival, the CJNG gang slayed three men and dumped their bodies in a van in the Mexican city of Cancun, alongside an eerie narco message that reads, We are the new group Mata Zetas, Zeta Killers, and we are against kidnapping and extortion and we will fight them in all states for a cleaner Mexico. Los Matazetas. At the time, most residents, law enforcement agencies, and even rival gangs were not exactly sure what to do with this message. Hence, it was treated with levity. But over the next few months, they'd come to realize the implication of that message and the face behind it. In its first famous public appearance, members of the CJNG, presumably under the orders of El Mencho, blocked a major street during rush hour in Veracruz and dumped two pickup trucks containing the mutilated bodies of 35 victims, including a policeman and two teenage boys. Of course, the incident was a real shocker for residents and local authorities. However, the most surprising thing about the operation was the in which it was carried out and the state of the bodies that were dumped. The gangsters went about their business with little or no fear, so much that they even allowed surveillance cameras to capture some of their movements. The mere sight of the scene was enough to send a spine-chilling message to members of the public and law enforcement agencies that a new sheriff was in town. Ironically, the forensic examination carried out by medical experts showed that most of the victims were not murdered with guns or other sophisticated weapons. Instead, they were tortured to death. This level of brutality was strange and extreme, especially for local residents in the port city of Veracruz, who, up until this moment, were safe from the drug-related violence that ravaged other parts of Mexico. But this was only just the beginning. Barely a month later after this incident, officials discovered the dead bodies of 30 CJNG victims. This was followed by several high-profile attacks on security forces across the country as the CJNG cartel announced its presence with a bang. In 2015, CJNG was was fingered as the probable culprit of a violent attack that left five federal police officers dead in Octolan. Three gang members and two civilians also lost their lives in the scuffle. One month later, in retaliation to the killing of one of its commanders, Heriberto Achevedo Cardenas, aka El Gringo, the gang ambushed a police convoy in the Pacific state of Jalisco, killing 15 policemen and leaving five other officers injured. All of this culminated in a 20-day period within which the CJNG cartel murdered 21 police officers. As expected, this despicable act Act got the attention of the local authorities and the U.S. Treasury Department, which immediately added El Mencho to its surveillance list. But surprisingly, the announcement only emboldened the activities of the cartel. In May 2015, the CJNG cartel continued its assault on security operatives, gunning down a military helicopter with an RPG. This brazen attack left five soldiers dead and set the tone for widespread violence in which seven citizens lost their lives while five gas stations and 36 vehicles were raised. Aside from the frequent run-ins with rival gangs, the CJNG cartel also made it a point of duty to terrorize public officials who posed a threat to their operation. In May 2018, the notorious gang made a failed attempt on the life of Luis Carlos Najera, the former security secretary of Jalisco. Two years later, members of the cartel laid ambush for the convoy of Omar Garcia Harfouk in the affluent community of Lomas de Chapultepec. The Mexico City's secretary of public security escaped the assassination attempt with gunshot wounds, but two of his security details and his chauffeur were murdered during the brutal attack. A few 
days later, a judge who had presided over different cases involving CJNG cartel members was murdered alongside his wife in Colima. At this point, it became clear that the CJNG cartel wasn't just another group of inexperienced criminals. Backed by El Mencho's tactical nous, the gang had assembled some of the most sophisticated weapons and artillery that money can buy within a short while, and was ready to take on any opposition. And surprisingly, most rival cartels, especially the Los Zetas, were unable to keep up with the pace and brutality that CJNG brought to the table. And that's not to say Los Zetas is a group of weaklings, far from that. In 2010, the Los Zetas cartel orchestrated one of the most horrific drug-related violence in recent history. Its members killed 72 immigrants in Tamaulipas because they refused to work for the cartel. A couple of months later, authorities in San Fernando discovered a mass grave containing the bodies of 193 Central American migrants who were believed to have been kidnapped and murdered by Los Zetas. So, it wouldn't be out of place to suggest that the Los Zetas cartel was one of the most violent criminal gangs in the land. But somehow, CJNG's brutality just seemed to be on a whole different level. By June 2020, the CJNG cartel had successfully relegated the Los Zetas cartel and the Gulf cartel factions in central Mexico to the backwaters. This left the Sinaloa cartel as the only gang in Mexico's underworld with enough firepower to challenge CJNG. Led by Joaquin Guzman Loera, popularly known as El Chapo, the Sinaloa cartel has a long-running history in Mexico and other neighboring countries. For a long time, the Sinaloa cartel set the standard for other cartels to follow, and its authority was almost never challenged. But all that changed as soon as the CJNG came on board. In terms of size and capacity, the Sinaloa cartel is often seen as the more established organization. But after a series of wild stunts by the CJNG gang, the once overbearing dominance of the Sinaloa cartel is now being questioned. At the height of their rivalry, in August 2016, CJNG successfully abducted six members of the Sinaloa cartel, including El Chapo's son, from a restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco. This was a show of force and strength by the CJNG cartel, which most people saw as the underdog of the rivalry. The incident could possibly have resulted in more violence. However, both parties temporarily settled their differences, and the kidnapped victims were released for a ransom of around $2 million. But with profitable drug trafficking routes at stake, it was only a matter of time before they resumed hostilities. In the following months, violent confrontations between CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel sent shockwaves across different states in Mexico, leading to hundreds of casualties. But the north-central state of Zacatecas served as the major battleground of these two narco-terrorist groups due to its proximity to the Durango Mountains, Chihuahua, and Sinaloa. In June 2021, a brutal face-off between both groups left 18 people dead in the state. Later that same year, 40 people were reportedly murdered in another violent clash between the CJNG and Sinaloa cartel. Both incidents were aggravated by other less-reported cases of severed bodies hanging from trees and bridges. At the peak of this struggle, 10 mutilated bodies were dumped just outside the office of the Zacateca state governor. In addition, three police officers were brutally executed in Somberete, and several other cases of aggression and violence were reported across Valparaiso, Loreto, Pinos, Calera, and Guadalupe. Outside Zacatecas, conflicts between CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel led to the murder of 60 people and the displacement of over 3,000 residents of Frontera Comalapa, a municipality located around Mexico's border with Guatemala. Amateur videos circulated on social media showed heavily armored vehicles belonging to both cartels patrolling the area to enforce their authority. Official documents from Mexico's defense ministry classify Frontera Comalapa as the centerpiece of the drug trafficking routes between Mexico and Guatemala, and that explains why both CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel are eager to exert absolute dominance over the region. In a bid to arrest the situation, the government initially deployed 4,778 officers from the Mexican military and National Guard troops to several hotspots, including Zacatecas, Guadalupe, Lazaro Cardenas, and others. In addition, more than 1,500 military and police personnel were stationed across strategic locations in Chiapas. But unfortunately, all of these efforts have yielded very little results, mostly due to the high level of corruption that plagues different agencies within Mexico's security architecture and the determination of both cartels to establish their superiority over the other. For security analysts, this bloody drug war is quite a surprise, especially considering that the CJNG gang is a newbie in the Mexican drug trafficking industry. In fact, it is even more shocking when you realize that CJNG is a splinter group of the Milenio Cartel, a notorious narco-terrorist gang that operated as a division of the Sinaloa Cartel in Jalisco, Colima, Micoaca. The foundation of the CJNG was laid back in July 2010 when Mexican security forces gunned down Ignacio Coronel Villarreal. Ignacio was popularly known among his allies and subjects as Nacho, and up until his death, he served diligently as one of the highest-ranked commanders in the Sinaloa Cartel. Critically, Nacho 
gave out orders to Oscar Orlando Nava Valencia, aka El Lobo, the leader of the Millennio Cartel. So, in other words, Nacho governed over the activities of the Millennio Cartel by proxy. Following Nacho's death, El Lobo was captured by the authorities, and with no significant leader to guide the affairs of the Millennio Cartel, internal divisions broke out within the gang. This led to the creation of two warring factions. On one side of the divide was the La Resistencia faction, and on the other end was the rebellious Tortidos faction, which reportedly sold out El Lobo to the authorities. The Tortidos faction would ultimately evolve to become the CJNG cartel. Origins and Leadership As its name suggests, the Sinaloa cartel originated in the state of Sinaloa, the epic center of Mexico's drug trafficking scheme. Pedro Aviles Perez, alias El Leon de la Sierra, was one of the first-generation commercial drug peddlers in the region. Having achieved measurable success, Aviles dragged El Chapo into the business with the aim of mentoring him to become one of the biggest narco dealers around. But fate had other plans for both men. Aviles Perez lost his life during a fierce shootout with security operatives in 1978, forcing El Chapo to link up with the Guadalajara cartel under the leadership of Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo. Regarded as the godfather of drug cartels in Mexico, Felix Gallardo's leadership skills were flawless. He instilled discipline among his henchmen and guided the Guadalajara cartel to become one of the most prominent drug trafficking gangs in the late 1970s and early 1980s. In 1985, Felix Gallardo approved the abduction of Kiki Camarena, a DEA agent who infiltrated the cartel. Kiki was taken to an apartment in the Jardines del Bosque neighborhood in Guadalajara, where he was tortured and brutally murdered. Murdered. Unknown to Felix Gallardo, this would be the greatest mistake of his career as a drug lord. After four years on the run, Felix Gallardo was arrested alongside 80 police officers who combined with him on different drug trafficking activities. By then, El Chapo had risen to become one of the top members of the cartel. He had become familiar with the terrain and the inner workings of the business. So, following the arrest of his Felix Gallardo, El Chapo founded the Sinaloa Cartel. Under El Chapo, the Sinaloa Cartel trafficked several contraband elements, including cocaine, marijuana, heroin, and methamphetamine. Amphetamine. But away from the usual narco-trafficking scheme, the Sinaloa cartel also engaged in other illicit businesses, including kidnapping, money laundering, and high-level extortion. Like most drug lords, El Chapo encouraged his cartel members to indulge in violence as a way to instill fear into the locals and rival gangs. In fact, on some rare occasions, El Chapo was at the forefront of the violence and brutality perpetrated by his gang. For instance, back in 2010, the diminutive drug lord was seen cutting off the head of a man with a chainsaw. The victim's face was later peeled and stitched to a soccer ball. Brazen acts of barbarity cemented El Chapo as one of the world's most notorious drug lords. And even though this helped to deter rival gangs from challenging his authority, there were times when diplomacy was needed. Thankfully, El Chapo's right-hand man and co-founder of the Sinaloa cartel, Ismael Zambada Garcia, aka El Mayo, was there to fill in the void. El Mayo's leadership and negotiation methods were quite different from those employed by other cartels. So, even though the Sinaloa cartel was very much immersed in the business of illegality, El Mayo ensured that the multi-billion dollar drug empire had a laid-back approach, especially when dealing with the citizens and law enforcement agencies. For instance, several victims of the Sinaloa cartel's extortion scheme admit that the gang's levies are very reasonable compared to the tariffs of other cartels. More importantly, the tax collection team from the Sinaloa cartel is said to be civil and polite. After defeating rival gangs to gain control of Tijuana City in Mexico, business owners in the region hailed the refined mode of operation adopted by the Sinaloa cartel. Now that Sinaloa won, things are good, one restaurant owner said. You need to pay just once, not weekly, only monthly. The fee has gone down. It's all easy. They are polite. Confirming this claim, a businessman in Baja California Sur said, the payments now are very predictable, and the collectors from the Sinaloa cartel are polite and calm. It's very civilized dealing with them, and you don't have to pay once a week in crazy sums, just every few months at a reasonable rate. And over the years, the Sinaloa cartel has built strong business connections with prominent political figures, social influencers, and even religious organizations. These high-level relationships allowed the no notorious gang to easily exert its dominance on new territories across Mexico. But more importantly, they helped to keep El Chapo out of prison for many years. Well, not until June 1993 when he was arrested in Guatemala and extradited to Mexico. Fast forward to January 2001, El Chapo pulled a fast one on the Mexican when he escaped the Puente Grande maximum security prison. But it wasn't in the way you'd expect. The jailbreak was incredibly peaceful and well orchestrated, such that El Chapo was wheeled out of the facility by a prison guard. A few years later, the drug lord was taken into custody again after security 
operatives apprehended him in the beach resort city of Mazatlan in Sinaloa. But in a matter of months, the diminutive kingpin would become a free man again thanks to a daring prison break stunt orchestrated by his wife, sons, and members of the Sinaloa cartel. This time, El Chapo escaped through a 1.6 kilometer tunnel dug underneath the prison facility. His latest prison break episode left the Mexican government and the security forces looking like clowns. El Chapo's illicit wealth and the extraordinary level of corruption in the country meant he was always able to sidestep the law. However, El Chapo's second prison break episode was seen as a huge dent in the efforts of the Mexican security forces to crack down on drug-related activities. So, a high-level surveillance mission was launched and the drug kingpin was arrested for the last time in January 2016. Mexico's president at the time, Enrique Peña Nieto, couldn't hide his excitement as he took to Twitter to announce the arrest. Mission accomplished, Peña Nieto wrote to his over 7 million followers. We've got it. I would like to inform the Mexican people that Joaquin Guzman Loera has been arrested. This brought an end to El Chapo's reign as the most notorious cartel boss in Mexico. But just when law enforcement agencies thought they could heave a sigh of relief, El Mencho was on hand to inherit that position. Right off the bat, El Mencho was a handful for security operatives and rival gangs. His default reaction to every situation was violence, and when he gets cornered, he simply responds with more violence. El Mencho's unconventional leadership methods and brutal ideologies ensured that the CJNG cartel quickly became one of the most vicious gangs in Mexico's underworld, a reputation that was built on a culture of violence and chaos. After founding CJNG in 2010, El Mencho reportedly swore allegiance to the Sinaloa cartel and deployed the full strength of his group to carry out several operations for the El Chapo-led gang. But the contrasting ideologies of both cartels meant they would eventually become fierce enemies. One significant difference between El Chapo and El Mencho is that the former lived a life of the party while calling the shots as boss of the Sinaloa cartel. The drug kingpin made it a habit to attend parties and other public functions in the company of extravagant convoys. Thomas Guevara, a sociologist at the University of Sinaloa, once described El Chapo as a media star with a theatrical streak, and he did live up to that expectation. According to reports, the notorious drug lord was flanked by 100 gunmen when he proposed to his beauty queen wife, Emma Coronel Aispuro. Meanwhile, the latter always kept a low profile as he orchestrated the activities of the CJNG cartel away from the public eye. But that doesn't make him less effective. As a former police officer, El Mencho came into the drug trafficking business knowing exactly what it takes to set up a well-structured unit of fighters. He runs his cartel like a paramilitary, narcos expert Daniel Solis said in an interview. Its arsenal and its organization put the regular army to shame. This was obvious from the incredible success he enjoyed against rival cartels and the Mexican security forces, especially in the early days after he founded the CJNG gang. Born into a modest family, El Mencho dropped out of school at the age of 10 to work on his parents' avocado farm. By the age of 14, he got a job as a security guard for a weed plantation, and a few years later, he crossed the border into the United States, where he started to sell drugs in small quantities. After a series of arrests between 1986 and 1989 in the United States, El Mencho was arrested for the last time in September 1992 and sentenced to five years imprisonment. Three years into his sentence, the drug lord was set free on parole and deported back to Mexico, where he initially joined the cops before doing a complete 180 to join the drug trafficking business. El Mencho entered the scene with a dogged mindset and an unwavering determination to break new grounds. As a result, the CJNG cartel became one of the first drug trafficking gangs to push fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid analgesic that's about 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. The exploits of El Mencho in this new adventure paved the way for other cartels, including the Sinaloa cartel, to traffic fentanyl. But beyond his fentanyl trafficking exploits, El Mencho is known for his unquenchable thirst for blood and violence. Normally, these are attributes that all drug lords in Mexico's underworld are expected to have. But according to the testimonies of close associates and even foes, El Mencho's level of cruelty is extreme. In fact, experts have likened his killing methods to that of ISIS, one of the world's most notorious terrorist groups. Such is the cruelty of El Mencho and the fierce reputation of the CJNG cartel. While some other cartel bosses would occasionally set up impromptu courts to interrogate their victims before delivering judgments, El Mencho would deliver judgment first and ask questions later. This brash approach meant he sometimes sentenced innocent victims to their untimely death, like one time when he ordered his henchmen to rape and set a 10-year-old girl on fire because he thought she was the daughter of the rival drug lord. But the attention of the world became drawn to him in 2015 after the hell series of gunfights between his cartel and security forces, which often led to a standstill of 
day-to-day -day activities in several cities across Mexico. In collaboration with Mexican law enforcement agencies, the DEA listed El Mecho as the world's most wanted drug lord while announcing an attractive bounty of up to $10 million for anyone who has useful information that would lead to his arrest. But up until now, the drug lord's whereabouts remain a mystery that authorities are unable to solve influence and power. While El Mencho and El Chapo are contrasting characters with completely different leadership methods, both men have achieved an incredible amount of success in the criminal underworld. For many years, the Sinaloa cartel under El Chapo was quite easily the biggest and most feared drug cartel in Mexico. At the peak of its operations, the cartel was responsible for 25% of all drugs smuggled into the United States through Mexico, while earning a staggering annual revenue of between 3 and $39 billion. In fact, the cartel became one of the most established institutions institutions in the whole of Mexico, with a strong presence in 17 Mexican states and 50 countries across the world, including Colombia, Argentina, and the United States. Currently, the cartel has existing alliances with the Familia Micoacana, the Gulf Cartel, and the Tijuana Cartel. As the man at the forefront of the cartel's success, El Chapo enjoyed luxuries that would normally be reserved for royalties. At some point, the drug lord had unrestricted access to the highest-ranking politicians in Mexico, including former President Peña Nieto, who reportedly received a $100 million bribe from the drug lord. El Chapo's generosity also meant that he was incredibly popular among people of the lower class as well. Many locals saw him as the Mexican Robin Hood who stole from the rich to give to the poor. He donated huge sums of money to individuals and impoverished communities. And during the peak of COVID-19, the Sinaloa cartel distributed relief materials to citizens. Gestures like this warmed the heart of the public towards the Sinaloa cartel and El Chapo, who many described as the narco saint. In 2014, hundreds of Mexicans took to the street with trumpets and banners asking the government to release the drug kingpin. Speaking to members of the media, Pedro Ramirez, a local resident of Badiraguato, Sinaloa said, We support Chapo Guzman because he is the one who gives us jobs and helps out in the mountains. And after his prison escape in 2015, Francisco Villa Gurola, a local pastor of the Apostolic Church in Badiraguato, had nice things to say about the drug lord. He is a good person, Villa Gurola told interviewers. He is not a person who threatens, intimidates. He knows how to converse, knows how to speak. As an individual, I recognize him as a good person. Following El Chapo's arrest and eventual extradition to the United States, the Sinaloa cartel has been plagued with a number of internal and external conflicts. Most notable is the internal feud between a selected group of El Chapo's children known as the Chapitos and El Mayo. According to reports, the Chapitos are looking to fill the void left by their father. But as the last standing member of the Old Guard and El Chapo's former right-hand man, El Mayo feels naturally entitled to the throne. This internal wrangling and a couple of high-level arrests have left the Sinaloa cartel struggling to maintain its dominance across several states. Its influence on the political class in Mexico has also dwindled. Within this period, the CJNG has experienced exponential growth to become one of the most ruthless gangs in Mexico. Currently, the cartel has a strong presence in roughly 24 Mexican states. However, its network of allies runs through the entire 32 states within the Mexican Republic. In addition, the CJNG cartel has a documented presence in other countries across South America, Asia, Latin America, and North America. This includes Colombia, Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, China, Australia, Canada, and the United States. According to recent DEA estimates, CJNG and the Sinaloa cartel have a staggering workforce of over 45,000 members, associates, facilitators, and brokers across 100 countries. But in recent times, CJNG has been able to leverage its culture of violence to expand its influence. Currently, the gang is well positioned to overtake Colombian cartels in terms of the revenue generated from cocaine sales. CJNG's current network of infrastructure and assets is worth over $20 billion. But interestingly, the group's finances are managed exclusively by another cartel called Los Cunis Cartel. Described as Mexico's richest cartel, the Los Cunis Cartel is an established money laundering organization that mops up dirty cash for different cartels. But its relationship with the CJNG Cartel is quite special because the bond between both groups is solidified by the marriage between El Mencho and Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia. Her uncle, Armando Valencia Cornelio, aka El Maradona, was the founder of the defunct Milenio Cartel, and her brothers helped set up the Los Cunis Cartel which played a huge role in the meteoric rise of the CJNG cartel. However, much of the group's success is attributed to the leadership methods of El Mencho and his influence on the police force. Like El Chapo and other cartel bosses, El Mencho hands out generous bribes to law enforcement agencies, but he doesn't shy away from intimidating them when they get on his nerves. Like this audio recording where the drug lord threatened to kill a police commander if he doesn't withdraw his troops. Delta Uno! Hey, ¿quién habla? Mira bien, hijo de tu puta madre. Soy mencho, güey. Relaja tu puta gente a la verga. Soy mencho, güey. 
relaja tus putas partidas, si no te voy a partir tu madre, tienes todo tu bola de perros, te tengo identificado 30 güeyes, hasta tus putos perros te voy a matar si no te relajas, güey. Interestingly, the police officer promised to withdraw his troops in a bid to pacify El Mencho, but the drug lord was clearly not having it. Ya está, señor, ahorita los bajo. Oh, no, 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 no cuelgues, hijo de la verga, te no. tengo ubicado en, en, en Chacala, güey. No, no, le estoy colgando, le estoy diciendo ahorita los bajo. At this point, you could tell that the policeman was already frightened, but El Mencho couldn't care less. The cartel boss continued his rage as he issued more threats. Venga, mire, revíremeles a todos los hijos de su puta madre porque todos agarran dinero y son buenos de puercos. Sí, lo que me están diciendo que... ¿Se me ponen a tiro o tú eres el primero que vas a marchar por ellos, León? No, señor. ¿Ale? No, señor, no se trata de eso. The cartel boss didn't seem impressed by these assurances, so he reiterated his stance one more time and instructed the police officer to keep his cell phone on. Pero no me lo, no me lo apague porque lo voy a entender como negatividad. No, señor, ahorita le mando un mensaje de un pronto... Órale, pues, Melón, ahí les quiero eso, ¿eh? Que se relajen a la verga. Sí, señor, usted me conoce, usted sabe que hay respeto y hay un plan. This shocking conversation highlights the brutality of El Mencho, even when dealing with the so-called enforcers of the law. According to reports, El Mencho operates a plata o promo strategy that involves making government officials choose between bribes and bullets. For those who choose, they get paid up to $3,000 monthly. And for those who refuse to subscribe to this evil scheme, they're given a first-hand dose of El Mencho's brutality. The plata o promo promo strategy has become a cliché among many cartels in Mexico, and so far, it seems to be quite effective. Current Jalisco State Attorney General Eduardo Almaguer confirmed recently that drug cartels have successfully compromised 90% of the police force in Guadalajara through corruption and intimidation. Most of these illegal activities are coordinated by the CJNG cartel, and if things continue on this trajectory, and quite possibly, the gang could upsurge the Sinaloa cartel to become the biggest drug cartel in Mexico. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, click on any of the cards on your screen to watch more interesting videos like this one.